Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. And if you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. So today we're talking about the one, the only, mental health liaison teams. So, this video is based on my own personal experience with mental health liaison teams both in the northwest of England, London. Here's my take. I wasn't going to film any more of this video, but I went on to Lancashire, what's it called? Lancashire and South Cumbria NHS Foundation Trust Mental Health Liaison Team. And let me read you this. As part of our work, we provide mental health assessments and advice for clients who are inpatients or medical wards within the acute trust. Two, conduct comprehensive risk and mental health assessments to standardise level of best practice. Offer advice and support to colleagues within these acute trusts. Ensure appropriate signposting or referral to relevant statutory or non-statutory agencies as either required, including single point of access perinatal community mental health teams, home treatment teams, substance abuse, misuse services, housing and emergency social services team in response to client need. Five, inform in writing GPs and other relevant agencies with the outcome of assessments within 24 hours. Improve communication between access and emergency, mental health services and other departments within the acute trust hospital section. This means they exalt like they actually help people. Like what the fuck? I've only ever had one mental health liaison team member say that he wanted a mental health assessment. Which I got section in. But hey. Let's just be real for a minute. People go to A and E because they don't know where else to turn. Yet the support that you actually get in A and E is abysmal. What's going on with this country? Yes, we have free healthcare, but is it any good? No. Everyone gets messed around with it. So, mental health layers and teams, what are they? They are the mental health team that comes to assess you when you go to A&E for your mental health. I say assess very, very loosely because that's definitely not what they do. But hey, let's try and let's try and be positive. If I can. This can be a challenge. So the first time I saw a mental plays and team would have been when I was 18 and living in Lancashire. Now I was talking to Childline information here because it's for up to 19 year olds and it was chat based before shout became a thing for not shout is i'll put it here shout is a mental health volunteer based text line and when i'm in crisis i have used them issue is if they think you're going to do something or feel like you could do something they phone the police and an ambulance but anyway, back on to the first experience. So yes, I went to A&E because I was suicidal. And the team literally it basically took the mick out of me for using child lion. I don't know why it was so taboo. It's just a mental health support lion. It's not even just mental health, it's for child abuse. It's for all sorts, it's a really good company not company, volunteer led agency. But it was so horrible. They were literally taking the mick out of me for it. And that was my first experience. So as you can imagine, I was not very happy having to see them again. Mental health players and teams are supposed to be the support between going to the crisis team, community mental health team or inpatient. What they actually do is tell you you made everything up and it's attention seeking and then they discharge you. Ooh. 
the most the worst experience I had was when I overdosed on amitriptyline. I knocked myself out. What was I even saying? Oh yeah, I overdosed on amitriptyline, knocked myself out, got put in a medical induced coma, and then when I came round and was breathing for myself. I got assessed by the mental health ladies and him for a whole six minutes. Yep, you heard me. Six minutes. I timed it. Technically, it was six minutes thirty-six, but I'm not giving them any leeway. And in that time, I got called an attention seeker. Basically, I got told I was doing it for attention of others, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was wasn't going to die and I would be fine and with that they discharged me all this is in Lancashire by the way I don't have much respect for their hospital in Preston they're like this, they never once detained me under section 52 so that was nice whoosh, 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 whoosh. check my top And then on the back. I like this top. I haven't really ever had a good experience with mental health players in the team. So yeah, that was the worst I've ever had. The best I've ever had would be when I got sectioned. So, don't know if that was a good experience or not, but at least he did something. So this was last year in London. And then the mental health layers and team came to talk to me, asked if I'd go under the crisis team. I said no because of my experience with the crisis team. If you haven't seen the video, they were hanging up on me. I'll link it up there. Um, and yeah, uh, he called for a mental health act assessment. And from that, I got put on a section two. My opinion on them as a whole is they're not fit for purpose. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. If you're new, subscribe. Check out my Patreon. Check out my Instagram. Check out my Amazon wishlist. Check out my Twitter. And yes, I'm calling it Twitter. I'm never going to call it X. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.